What's going on friends? Welcome back to the Honeystead. It's a perfectly damp and dreary day and one that I've been waiting for because we've got to get some work done up here and no better way to do it on the days where I'm not outside foraging or all the other things that I do out there. But I wanted to introduce you to this plant that I have in these two jars, which I wanted to show you, but since it's raining, I'm just gonna insert a picture and introduce you to it. And many of you probably have it growing in your gravel <laughs> or along your property line, or pretty much this plant is one of the hardiest plants. And I just, I love it. I love how simple it is, but also it's a great introduction plant when it comes to, to learning how to forage and then seeing kind of what's in your area. And I wanted to talk about it. But this is Plantago Major or Broadleaf Plantain. And this is one that I use quite often, mainly because I get stung by my bees every once in a while. And when I do, this is my go-to plant, whether I keep it as a sap, which this is the beginning part of how to infuse a plant matter into an oil to then turn it into a sap, or um, taking it and making a poultice by crushing it up and then being a nice classy lady like I am and just taking it and chewing it up and just spitting it on the area where I need to make a quick poultice. Like when I got stung on my face, that was great. Um, thanks girls, I really appreciated that. But I also wanted to share with you because I don't think that I've ever shared the other uh, forms of using plantain and using the leaves. Now I have right here, this isn't quite ready yet, but in the process of me harvesting the plantain leaves that we had growing in our field, which I had been holding on to for a while, I took all the leaves, chopped them up very, very fine and filled them in a jar. I poured my 50% uh, alcohol, which I'm using vodka, which is 100 proof, filled my jar at a one part plant matter to two parts of my menstruum and this is still sitting this has a little bit longer um, so i'm not quite ready to do anything with it but i wanted to show you the difference between making a tincture uh, which is an alcohol extract or you can use apple cider vinegar and this has been storing in a cool dark place and i'm going to go ahead and put it back but I am not gonna forget to shake it up before I put it back. But there's something different about this and I wanted to show you. Now I'm using just an unbleached cheesecloth with the ring. It is not sealed at all. Um, and the reason is, oops, <laughs> I didn't wanna make a mess. I'm really good at that. But the reason is, is because the plant matter actually has moisture in it. So when you are putting uh, fresh plant matter into your oil, your carrier oil of choice, I'm using olive oil, but there are other oils that you can use. But if I were to seal this instead of letting it breathe, it would actually turn rancid. Um, so you want it to breathe. Now you can do this a few different ways. You can take this, store it in a cool dark space for the same 30 days, or I've seen people will set it in a, a nice warm window. It's been rainy for the last couple of days, so that did not work. And I needed this oil pretty quick um, because we are getting ready to make up a whole bunch of little tins for us to bring to the Homesteaders of America conference, which we will be there. I'm gonna put all the dates down below. So if you guys are going to the conference, make sure to come say hi. We're gonna have our tent set up selling honey, selling our salves, selling hopefully some beeswax if I can if I can get to that in time and then also um, some propolis tincture as well. That's kind of my goal. I'm gonna have a few that will be that will be offering for sale. But I didn't have enough time to wait. Um, so what I did is I took this, put it in the crock pot, uh, put filled the crock pot up with water and I just let this sit on warm for like, I think it was like 36 hours. I did kind of forget about it, um, but it's not gonna hurt. It didn't cook, it didn't boil, but it absolutely was able to infuse this beautiful, rich, green plant matter into this oil. So we are gonna go ahead and strain this out. And I do have an amber colored mason jar 
that I'm going to use um, because basically here in the next day, I'm gonna finish rendering down all of my beeswax that I have from, from when we did our honey harvest and then that is what we are gonna use for our salve making. But I wanted to share with you um, because I love to pull in my books and talk to you guys about this plant. And I have my big one here, um, making a mess. <laughs> this is my, my go-to. Um, this is my, the Medical Herbalism by David Hoffman. I do really enjoy this book. It has been a great resource. Um, but basically, it will kind of go into detail. It's kind of more medical if this is not a type of book that you like to read. I also pulled another reference, which I do um, I do very much like, but this is Liz Neves. This is Northeast Medicinal Plants, and it's 111 uh, plants that you can actually go out and forage for. And it gives you a beautiful breakdown of the plant and kind of, you know, how to use it. But in short, we use it externally as a salve. This is what this will be, but you can absolutely use it internally as a tea. You can um, eat the leaves. You can infuse the leaves to drink as a tea. You can actually use the root as well as the seeds. Now the seeds are kind of funny. Um, you'll see them this time of year. They're super long probably one of the most fun plants as a little kid when you're out sitting in the yard you pick up the the seeds and then you just kind of run your fingers down the seeds and then break them off and that that's honestly probably why there are so many plants <laughs> that are growing in gravel because kids well myself included those are the plants that you pick up and you help spread the seeds um, which is why i love to teach our kids about them because it's an easy plant. Now, the seeds have a lot of mucilage in them. So if you are constipated and you need to kind of like eliminate, um, you can actually eat the seeds and that will help that process. Um, but the leaves itself, the actions that we are looking for, and this is where I will pull in the big book, expectorant, demulcent, anti-inflammatory, astringent, diuretic and antimicrobial. Those are really big words. I'm gonna put them all down below, but I'm also gonna put a description of what they each are. And so when you're learning about plants, you're gonna see herbal actions and you're gonna hear the big words, but it's best to kind of understand the description of what they are. Expectorant, you know, expelling. Okay, that means that if you uh, have something going on respiratory or if you are kind of like you got something in your lungs and you need to expel it so then that would lead me to understand okay well then maybe it's good for your cough um, maybe that's how people used it to help get it out then you start doing your research and finding out that that is exactly um, exactly it it's great for your cough uh, anti-inflammatory so then we know inflammation um, so how would you use it well I'm sharing with you guys that I've used um, and I constantly use the plantain externally when I get stung by a bee so that inflammation that is caused um, that will help soothe the the inflammation you also might see the word vulnerary which is a an herbal action that describes a herb that offers support on mending the tissues both internally and externally so when you're starting to kind of associate yourself with the plants and seeing what their herbal actions are and understanding the description of what those herbal actions are, then you can figure out kind of in short how to how to formulate. Now what's interesting about plantain, it is both astringent, which is drawing out as well as moistening, which is one of the reasons why that I'll use it externally as a skin salve. And, and it's really good about pulling out the things that need to be pulled out like if you get stung by a bee or if you get bit by a mosquito and there's even some 
some stories about uh, having plantain being used for snake bites as well. Um, I have not tried that, but I do like to read about how other, other forms of how this plant has been used. So I'm gonna go ahead and strain this out because we are due to make a salve. I will put um, all of the books that I have referenced, which is The Medical Herbalism by David Hoffman. This is the big book. And the other book that I used was the Northeast Medicinal Plants. There is a Southeast Medicinal Plants, uh, depending on your location, and Cory Pine Chain has written this book. Many of the plants do cross over, but I've had some people ask about Texas, and this does cover some plants in Texas as well. Um, so all of those books are on the Amazon store. It's just easier for me to be able to kind of uh, give it a one place to, to reference. And I'm going to get a tray because you guys know me and my mom who is not here with me today would be yelling at me if I made a mess and did not use a tray. So be right back. Now, what's kind of nice about <laughs> doing it like this is um, I actually, to strain it, so it's kind of easier to just do it like this to get the initial strain out of the way because I am trying to not overcomplicate things. But look at that. This is gonna make a really good skin salve. And it is very much one of my favorites. You can also pair this. Um, I'll use lavender essential oil. Lavender is also very good um, for relieving bites and stings. Gonna make a mess. All right, and I am storing this in an amber colored jar for right now. The reason is I don't wanna waste one of my big bottles because I know I've, I've, as soon as I finish rendering down all of my wax, I will be using this like here in the next couple of days. But I'm curious if any of you guys have used plantain before and do you have it growing outside and can you identify it? I'm gonna go ahead and do this one as well and then probably should have checked that before. Wow, that is super green. Now I still have to squeeze all of this out and I might I might store it in just a regular just a regular jar. And uh, if you do not have the amber colored jars, that's okay. You can absolutely use your clear colored jars. You just don't want to put it on display because once the plant matter has been extracted. You don't want the potential for breakdown, so you don't want to keep it directly into the sunlight. This will work. Again, I am just going to use, I'm gonna use it pretty quickly. And I will, I will take you guys along with me. I have a video out of making salves and my ratio with my beeswax. There are a few videos I think out, so I'll make sure to put them below or if I remember, I will tag them up top. If you have dried cracked skin like on your on your hands, just putting your hands in the leaves themselves like this is so soothing to to your skin. So very soothing. I made a little mess. I'm concentrating too hard on the camera and that thing and yeah. Okay, so I think I've gotten to the point where now it's time to squeeze. I'm gonna go ahead and double up my cheesecloth to make it a little easier um, to make sure that nothing, nothing comes through. And then I just squeeze. Okay. 
Okay. You'll get yourself a workout. And I'm gonna need another jar. Let's go again. Oh no. Now, all that's left to do is I gotta clean up the jars before I really kind of label them because again, I don't know how to not make a mess <laughs> and that's okay, I will own it. Um, but look how rich and green that one is. Obviously, this is a brown, a brown jar, so you're not gonna be able to see it, but oh my goodness, how beautiful is that? Now, this is gonna make a lovely skin salve and I've got a little bit more work to do, but I wanted to talk about this plant and just show you that there are multiple different ways to use the same plant. The leaves, the seeds, and even the roots. So I hope that you do a little bit more research about plantain and all that it has to offer. When I go to set up a salve, I will take you guys along with me, um, but there are a few salve videos out as well that are already done, so. This is gonna be lovely, and I will more than likely get at least another harvest in with the patch that I have growing very soon. So, as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye, guys.